Reverend Father, my brothers of South Plainfield Council 6203, ladies and gentlemen, the installation of council officers is always a solemn and hope-filled occasion. I offer my sincerest thanks to my brothers who during the past year have given me the benefit of their prayers and advice, the strength of arms in our actions, and the invaluable support of their confidence. You have demonstrated that a small group of people united in a common cause can be a powerful force for good, and that by working together as a team, we can make a difference in our parishes, our communities, and the world. On behalf of the officers who are retiring from their posts, I extend our worthy successors our warmest congratulations, assurance of continued cooperation, and prayerful wishes for the most successful administration. Please rise. It is my pleasure to welcome and introduce our worthy Dif District Deputy Dave Pinto and D District Warden Steve Batano. Steve Batano. To you, our worthy District Deputy, I present the gavel and ask you to proceed with the installation of officers. Thank you, worthy past Grand Knight. Worthy Warden, if you would proceed the officers forward. Before we begin, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it, I just wanted to make a point that it is good, very good, that we are here uh, undertaking this ceremony in the church. As you know, and you'll hear through my verbiage of the uh, installation of officers, which is somewhat new, that mirrors our Faith in Action pro program, uh, that it is very faith-oriented. It very much directs our attention to the Knights of Columbus commitment to support of parish life and, and to our church. Uh, we have seen this very much so in the last four or five months with the uh, COVID, as uh, parishes have had the need for additional help. The Knights have been called upon to do uh, things that uh, we possibly have never done before, but uh, we do our, our service to the church with a smile. Uh, many of us, I know, have learned how to sanitize pews over the last uh, four or five months, whether or not it's best to spray the paper towel first or spray the pew first. Uh, in some cases, it's, it's caused additional work for us because as our wives have watched us sanitize the churches week in and week out, we've now been called upon to sanitize and clean the kitchen counter. So we now all have new jobs at home, but uh, it is a, an honor for us to, to do this service. And our pastors and our priests and our bishops need us now truly more than ever. You'll notice that I forego the fancy dancy district deputy pins, and instead I have a Knights of Columbus pin that was just released not long ago, and it simply says, in solidarity with our bishops and our priests. And I think that really says all that we need to say in terms of the commitment that the Knights of Columbus has to our churches. So, in the spirit of that commitment, we begin. Please be seated. Officers, please remain standing. Reverend Father, my brother Knights, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you greetings from our Supreme Chaplain, Archbishop Laurie, our Supreme Knight, Carl Anderson, the Supreme Officers, the Board of Directors of the Knights of Columbus, and our worthy State Deputy, Vincent Tavermina. Before we proceed to the important and pleasant tasks ahead, I will ask our worthy chaplain to invoke the blessings of God upon our efforts. Worthy chaplain, would you please lead us in the opening prayer? Thank you. And as part of that, and a welcome here this evening also to this Church of the Sacred Heart in South Plainfield, New Jersey. It's a delight to have you here and for us uh, noteworthy. Uh, this weekend, we celebrate our anniversary of our official incorporation as a parish. We'll be 115 years young. We'll be celebrated in a very different way this year. Not our feast day, not the Sacred Heart, but the day on which there were signatures placed on a piece of paper in Trenton and officially a title given to the faith community gathering here now 
and has been for the past 115 years as the Church of the Sacred Heart. Part of that tradition and part of our history is the presence of the Knights of Columbus here. So it is with great joy that I open with the prayer this evening as we call upon our God. And let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Heavenly Father, we, your children, are assembled here to invest the chosen officers of our council with the medals symbolic of the authority to lead and to administer our council in the days to come. Bestow upon us the grace to remember that as all duly appointed authority stems from you, so also does the wisdom to exercise that authority with justice and charity. Inspire us, therefore, to always consult with you in the important decision-making process. Imbue us with the strength to act always in the spirit of brotherly love and grant us the precious humility to acknowledge the ever-present possibility of error in human deliberation. Heavenly Father, aid us to be the finest example of complete dedication to the practice of Christian principles, as was our venerable founder, Reverend Michael J. McGivney, and to conduct ourselves at all times so as to reflect your holy will. In the spirit of Father McGivney, may our order continue his work of caring for the needy and the outcast. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your Son, Jesus Christ, more closely, following his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the Church. With Our Lady of Guadalupe, under whose maternal protection our order is consecrated, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Worthy Warden, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. To you retir retiring officers of this council, I offer my congratulations for work well done and my gratitude to each of you for the devotion of which you have exemplified our principles of charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. To you, the council officers who I am about to install, I express my confidence that you will add luster to your council's good works, making them even more beneficial to this church and thereby enhancing our order's proud name. In the life of every man, there arises many opportunities to take stock of his advancement, both in spiritual and material sense, to repair omissions, to correct errors, and to plan for a brighter future. Likewise, in the life of a council, the commencement of each fraternal year provides similar opportunities. It is a time when inventory must be taken, past achievements weighed and evaluated, and future plans conceived and apprised. These plans may always be considered in terms of how well they will enable your council to serve this parish, to strengthen your members and their families in the faith and benefit your neighbors. May I please, worthy warden, have the list of officers to be installed. I now ask our worthy chaplain, Father John, to bless the medals of office. And we pray. Father in heaven, we ask you to bless these medals, symbolic of the offices to which these men have been called. We pray that you will bestow upon these men who wear these medals the wisdom to exercise the leadership and authority that these symbols represent. 
May this council ever support the life of the church through our parish communities, both here at the Church of the Sacred Heart and Our Lady of Czestochowa here in South Plainfield and in the church around the world. And as a family-centered organization, may our members and their families work together to build the common good as faithful citizens. May these medals be always worn with reverence, dignity, and grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, worthy chaplain. As council chaplain, you are heir to the great vision and legacy of our founder, Venerable Father Michael J. McGivney and a key figure in the structure of your council and the steward of its spirituality. The genius of Father McGivney was that he saw the great potential inherent in the respect of collaboration between clergy and laity, and that lies at the heart of our order. More than ever before, your role as council chaplain is indispensable to the Catholic character of our order. And I shall now, it is my high honor now, to officially install you as the council chaplain. And of course, the medal that is already on Father John. Father John, thank you very much for your service. You're welcome. Thank you. Worthy officers, you have been chosen by your brothers to guide the destiny of your council during this year. Your brothers have demonstrated their confidence that you are capable of outstanding leadership. Prove that they were correct. Remember that it is through your cooperation that your past achievements have been made possible. Continue to merit the cooperation that by measuring all of your decisions in the light of what will be fair, just, and beneficial to them and this parish. Solicit their advice. Consider it carefully, but remember always that the good of the order is paramount. Under the leadership of your Grand Knight, the Council officers must function as a united team. So, for so powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole world. As your district deputy, I offer you this advice. Your Council will be judged on its actions. Accordingly, as fraternal leaders, you should focus your energies on strengthening parish and family life and growing your council and membership strength for your families. Charitable outreach and fraternal activities. This will build a lasting legacy of your council in the spirit of Father Michael J. McGivney, our founder. Remember, your council's greatest assets are its members, and the unique gifts and talents that it brings to the service of this parish. And now confident that you will fulfill the duties of your respective offices to the best of your abilities, live a good Catholic life, and serve as a model of Catholic brotherhood, we shall proceed with the installation of council officers. It is now my duty to extract from you several promises that given in the presence of your brothers, friends, and family, will be binding as long as you remain in office, to which you have been elected. Simply answer, I do. Do you promise to obey the laws and rules of this order? I do. Do you promise to be a good Catholic gentleman and to live your life through the practice of good works and personify the charity that evangelizes. I do. Do you promise that through your actions you will help build the domestic church, protect the sanctity of the family, and promote respect for human dignity and religious liberty? I do. Do you promise to continue to form yourself in the knowledge of our holy religion, to foster priestly vocations, and to faithfully serve our church. I do. Do you promise to uplift those in need, 
to respect your fellow human beings, to treat all fairly, and to disagree with others honestly and respectfully through civil discourse and to support one another. I do. It is important that you and your members remember that upon conduct of each depends the fate of all. Know that locally your council and globally our order is an enormous force of good and that the world and our church needs us now more than ever. Your district deputy, your state deputy, the supreme officers are eager for your success and prosperity of your council. Never hesitate to ask for help. Study the official instructions you have received and take advantage of any resources that are available. Worthy council officers, I accept your promise get, as given in good faith by Catholic gentlemen. Therefore, I shall now invest each of you with your Medal of Honor, a symbol of the duties and responsibilities you expect, accept as Knights of Columbus fraternal leaders. Your families may come up and present the medals with you. I will, uh, we will ask you all to point to the medal, and you can simply uh, place the medal around your neck. And if you would, after you've done that, please turn around so other family members can take pictures at that time. Worthy Grand Knight, Thomas Berry. Worthy Grand Knight, Thomas Berry, may you ever wear this Grand Knight medal proudly as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and this parish. So I hope some take pictures. Worthy Deputy Grand Knight Stephen Bell and Jerome. Worthy Deputy Grand Knight Stephen Bell and Jerome. May you ever wear this Deputy Grand Knight Medal proudly as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and this church. Congratulations. Just simply turn around. Stand around just for a couple of seconds. Terrific. That's great. Thank you. Worthy Chancellor Jeffrey Pauls. Worthy Chancellor Jeffrey Pauls, may you ever wear this Chancellor Medal proudly as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and this church. Congratulations. Congratulations, Chair. Worthy Recorder, Colin Berry. Worthy recorder, Colin Berry, may you ever wear this recorder medal proudly so as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and this church. Congratulations. You can just turn around for a minute. Stay there for just a bit. Okay, thank you. Worthy treasurer, Charles Pedrico. Worthy Treasurer Charles Pedrico, may you ever wear this Treasurer's Medal proudly so as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and this church. Congratulations. God bless you. Worthy Trustee Joseph Wolkowski, Jr. Worthy Trustee Joseph Wilskowski, Jr., may you ever wear this trustee medal proudly to ask to bring honor to yourself, your council, and this church. Congratulations and God bless you. Worthy trustee Thomas Pollock. Worthy Trustee Thomas Pollock, 
May whoever wear this trustee's medal proudly as to bring honor to yourself, council, and this church. Congratulations. God bless you. We're the inside guard, Thomas France. We're the inside guard, Thomas France. May you ever wear this medal to bring honor to yourself, your council, and this church. Congratulations. God bless you. Worthy District Warden, please form the officers. Worthy officers, you now form a cross to remind you that, first and foremost, you are a Catholic man and a Knights of Columbus member. You are expected to live by the tenets your faith, and then put them into action through your fraternal skills. As an officer, you need to hold yourself to a higher standard. Your individual skills and abilities, when combined with those of your fellow officers, will help your council to grow and expand its charitable outreach. In doing so, your council will be able to help more people in need. The expansion of your charitable service projects is also an effective way for your council to continue to grow and to recruit and retain new members. As faces of those in need change, and in these days grow, your council's programs need to adapt to meet the new challenges of tomorrow. As your assigned district deputy, I stand ready to serve the officers and members of this council, and so does your insurance agent and the rest of the officers of the Knights of Columbus. And therefore, it's my high honor and distinct pleasure to now declare that you are truly qualified and installed in your office and authorized to conduct the business of your council and our order until such time that you have been lawfully succeeded. Having completed my task, I present to you your duly installed officers of the fraternal year. I now call upon the worthy Grand Knight if he would like to say some words. I don't have anything prepared, but I do want to say how humble I am to serve you, and I know that with you behind me, we can do anything. We are a strong, committed unit. We have an unusual year, and we have challenges, of course, but we will meet them. We will find ways to grow and spread our programs, and I look forward to, to that challenge and working with all of you and with Dave and uh, with the Father. Thank you. Worthy chaplain, as we close our official business of the day, please invoke the blessings of the Lord upon these men who will serve as officers of this council and upon all here present who will be their close companions in the great works of the Knights of Columbus. Father John. Thank you. Where the officers, as you now stand together, you form a living cross. May the cross ever be a reminder to you that you must be renewed in Christ and that your administration must show that Catholic lay leadership among the people of God flows from this renewal, invoking God's help to fulfill this mission. I now ask the Lord's blessing upon each of you, and we pray. Holy Father, we thank you for the graces which you have bestowed upon us all. We thank you for the spirit of cooperation which has reigned here and for the inspiration which you have placed in the hearts of these men today. 
We pray that you will find merit in the endeavors of our newly elected officers and the brother knights of this council and their families. We ask this as we ask all things in your name and your blessing upon them and each of us. You are God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I now declare this installation of officers complete. Congratulations and God bless you.